Hey guys, uh, Colin Gwynn here and uh, Raf D'Andrea from Verity Studios. Uh, thanks for coming out. Thanks for having me. Raf, yeah, absolutely. We, uh, Raf's in Austin for South by Southwest. We did some, uh, some awesome demos today. You've got some cool stuff happening with Sony tomorrow. But uh, I just wanted to sit and chat with you a little bit about what you guys are up to at Verity. Yeah, doing quite a few things. Today was a fail safe. Yes. So we're, uh, you know, flying and uh, crashing drones without our fail safe and then putting our fail safe on them and seeing how they can recover from various failures. That's right. That's right. Now you guys are, so, you, you know, I think it, sometimes people could, could look at Verity and say, wow, they're, they're doing all this like deep tech flight code stuff. But then they're doing this kind of experiential entertainment, yep. you know, not really realizing how related the two are. Correct. But, you know, a lot of like kind of the early stuff that you guys were doing were uh, figuring out a way to fly multiple drones over audiences and crowds and, and, and performers right. on Broadway. Right. Correct. Yeah. When we came out of stealth mode in 2016, uh, it was to do a show with Cirque du Soleil on Broadway. We uh, did 400 shows. 398 to be exact, uh, flying over performers um, with uh, one kilogram drones over two pounds um, with up to 2,000 people watching yep. uh, day in, day out, uh, right downtown Manhattan. Those of us that have been in the drone space for a while and have followed you closely and the videos that we all claimed to be fake when they first came out <laughs> um, and your TED Talks and things like that, you know, what. For me, like the, the really, really deep tech stuff that you guys do that, that just really, frankly, blows me away is, is in, in, in and around your flight control algorithms. And that's obviously what we're showing off today in, right. in the demos, but it, but it dovetails into what you guys were doing, right? If you want to fly these, you know, almost two and a half pound flying lampshades, you know, over the stage, but could easily, if something went wrong, go around, whatever, you had to develop something that was, that was pretty darn near foolproof. Correct. And you're not high enough to use a ballistic parachute system or something like that. It has to recover really, Correct. really quickly. Correct, and probably we couldn't even use, even if, even if it could, which they can't, recover in such a small space. That's right. I don't think anybody would want these uh, rocket-propelled no. parachutes flying over a stage. That's right. That's yeah, right. so we really had to develop some, some uh, pretty powerful tech that would allow these quadcopters to be robust to any single point of failure. I was at DJI, we were developing, you know, more stabilized camera systems and gimbals. And, right. and then we see this video that you put online, yeah. which is a quad rotor with fixed propellers, yeah. standard quad rotor, two going clockwise, two going counterclockwise. And you guys are sticking a broomstick up, taking out one of the props. Yeah. And this thing recovers itself in like three feet or less. And then it's spinning around like a, like a whirly bird yeah. UFO and you guys are safely landing it. And yeah. we're all scratching our heads going, no way. How, how are they able to do the math that fast yeah. to keep this thing, you know, under control? So, you know, that to me just like, what, what were kind of some of the hard challenges there? Well, first of all, when we, when we developed the algorithm in 2014, that was in my research group at ETH Zurich, we were just asking simple fundamental questions like how many fixed rotors do you really need to have stable flight? And mm -hmm. we were surprised when we went through the math that theoretically you could do it with as little as one actually. Which I saw that video as yeah. well. But that took, <laughs> it took about two years to build that uh, you know, <laughs> single uh, propeller flying vehicle. I mean, that's really an exercise in, in uh, feasibility. It's not very practical. But you <laughs> academics. Yeah, exactly. But it's fun, right? Because that's, yes. that's what allows you to push the boundary. We, right. we discovered, you know, uh, by going through the math that you could actually fly with, uh, you know, with three or two, um, but then it would be very unstable. So you had to really develop the right control algorithms to stabilize about this new operating mode. And uh, we went through the math, we, you know, we did some simulations, then we actually built a vehicle and we had it flying. It was really surprising to see that not only can you keep this thing in the air, but you can actually fully you, control you can it. Fully control you it. can move it anywhere you want in space. It's just that you lose this yaw degree of freedom but you can still position it anywhere you want in space. Yep, I, I, uh, so I had the privilege of flying it last week for the first time. And the feeling of flying a quad rotor, watching one of the props, you know, they would trigger yep. to kill one of the, the yep. motors. And then, you know, it, it starts to fall out of the sky. That's right. You know, you see that initial reaction. Yep. We hide all the complexity um, in the algorithm. So to the user, if it is being flown by remote control, just sees a regular quadcopter. It's maybe not as reactive as a standard quadcopter when it's in this mode. Sure. You know, it can't move sure. as fast. It's just a little it's bit more sluggish. Thrust. It's got half the thrust, a little bit more sluggish, 
but you can still control it, which then also means that it's easy to make it fully autonomous too, right? Yes. I mean, uh, we also can fly it uh, without any human intervention at all. No, it, it, it's amazing. We saw that today as part of the demo that you guys were, were flying a quadrotor in an autonomous kind of lawnmower pattern as yep. if it's doing an inspection or something. The motor goes out, it recovers, it goes into a hover, flew home, and using, which also surprised me, using GPS with the mag spinning that yeah. fast around and around, I'm like, man, how are they getting like pretty much right on the landing spot yep. of the home point every time? And so I, I, there must be, you know, obviously you guys are doing a lot of inertial navigation as well, yeah. right? A lot and, of sensor fusion. I mean, we're just, at the end of the day, it's about fusing different types of sensors so that even when you're spinning in this way, but I mean, this is like a fast rate of, I mean, and hopefully we'll cut some of that yeah. into this conversation yeah. here, but this is like, this is not just a, a quadcopter slowly spinning. Yeah. This is like a, a freaking top fast. in the air. I think, uh, I think when we were doing that was maybe, I want to guess here, maybe three Hertz or so, um, you know, three rotations per second, but that's actually very easy to control. I mean, right now the fail safe is, uh, can be implemented in software alone. But if you're willing to do a few hardware changes, you can actually make it even easier to fly, even more responsive. For example, you can tilt the propellers a little bit mm -hmm. so that when it does go into the fail safe mode, it spins a little bit slower or a little Slows bit faster, down depending little bit. on what is mm -hmm. what, what you want without sacrificing any performance. Probably 95% or more of all commercial quads, hundreds of thousands of quads flying around, doing work on a daily basis, all the M100s, M210s, Phantoms, Inspires, you know, custom built quads, like all of these drones that are flying around in quad configuration could be having controlled landings when they have ESC burnouts and motor yep. burnouts, which is actually like a fairly common thing to happen. It's usually the most common uh, failure mode is the propulsion system failure. Yeah, and I think even in y'all's testing, you guys found that yeah. it's, it's actually kind of worse than most people would have guessed and, and how the mean time between failure. Correct, the mean time between failure was surprisingly low of, uh, of some commercial uh, consumer drones that we bought. We did a whole bunch of testing and we were surprised by the results. Yeah, yeah, and so for me, you know, obviously I think there's there's a place for things like ballistic parachute systems and things yeah. like that because who knows, obviously like a bird strike or hit something, two, two of the front rotors go out, you know, yep. something like that. But you know, what I realized was obviously one, you're carrying a lot of extra grams, which is, you know, increasing the load on the entire system. Correct. There's the extra cost involved, but really to me, the biggest key is that when I saw your fail safe algorithms kick in, seeing how controllable the quad was right. and seeing it be able to return home and land, I just immediately had these flashes of like, you know, right now, there's not that many commercial drones flying around. In five years, that's not gonna be the case. Drones will be flying all over the place, doing work at construction sites, roadway projects, et cetera. And if you've got a drone flying back and forth over a roadway or something like that, and you know maybe the parachute saves it from, from crashing down really fast, Correct. but it still could easily land on a highway. Like you can't control where the parachute is gonna land. It's just gonna blow with the wind and, and come down. Versus with you guys, you actually have control of how to bring Correct. it down safely. I mean, I think the way we view parachutes is as follows. If, you know, for low cost consumer drones, you know, you don't, the economics don't work out. You can't put a parachute in every, you know, consumer drone. But you should certainly put this fail safe because there is it's code. There is it's code, right? So that that's a no-brainer. If you do want to put a parachute on because of you know you want to be robust to any single point of failure and you want to be um, you know uh, have an independent way of controlling it or mm -hmm. uh, of kicking into a safety mode, they should still put this fail safe for the reason that you just said. If that's something right. does happen, if it is a propulsion system failure, you know don't deploy your parachute activate the fail safe and move it out of the way into a nice safe spot and do a landing. To me, it seems like every quadcopter flying around should at yeah, that's the very least right. be armed with these algorithms. Exactly, I mean, right? it's, a, it's a software only uh, upgrade. Awesome, well, Raf, thank you so much for Thanks coming for having me. We really appreciate it. Enjoy yeah, the discussion. Yeah, it's good to have you in Austin. Thanks, Thanks yeah. for having me. Awesome, thanks guys.